Good evening, everyone. Once again, we're here again. Today is uh, April the 15th, 2018, and you're here with Minister Elder Crystal Fortier. You're here with Minister Crystal Fortier TV here on YouTube. God bless you. Thank you for being here with me once again this Sunday afternoon. What a wonderful day it has been for any day that God makes uh, is a wonderful day, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I thank God for you, those of you who are here with me. Thank you for coming back. Welcome and welcome to you who have never been with me. So welcome back and welcome. God bless you. It's a it's an honor and a privilege to be alive today in the, in this world because a lot of things are happening in the in the news today. A lot of prophecy is coming true. The the, the land of the to the north of Israel, which is uh, Russia has done some crazy things this weekend by sending that missile, uh, which uh, appeared in uh, around the Florida area of the United States of America. And uh, wow, a lot of prophecy is happening at this time as we speak. And so, um, you know, woe to those who don't believe. It's really sad. A lot of people don't believe in God anymore. They don't believe based on uh, things that have happened to them in the world based on watching other pastors and ministers. That's why 2 Timothy 2.15, God says, a study to show yourself approved unto God, uh, a workman, need not being afraid, but who is rightly dividing the word of truth. I believe I said that correctly. But the thing is, if you're not studying for yourself, you are, uh, you're missing out. You're missing out on the opportunity to get firsthand information in your brain not coming from a pastor or someone who you glean from or who teaches you because otherwise that scripture wouldn't be there. God wants us to study for ourselves. And that's one reason why I'm here with you today. And I come to you every Sunday to bring the word of God. And my hope to you is that you have your Bible, get your King James Bible open. Uh, the, never, the number seven Bible that was written is written in English, in the English language. Uh, I think Tiller, Tillman, uh, I can't the author I can't think of his name at this time but get your King James Bible out and come along with me the Bible that I use is the King James Version and the, this Bible actually has I don't know if you can see it it's probably backwards but it has the, the King James Version and the Living Version side by side so I'm able to um, you know break it break it down in some layman's terms as the Holy Ghost gives me interpretation as well as to what it means and what I've learned already in my own study time and from my own pastors and in my own time studying with the Lord. And so I give God the most high God all the glory. You know, we you know, we just have to stay plugged in. Uh, God is so good. He's everlasting and his truth endures through all generations. I praise God for his grace and his benevolence. His hope, his love, his joy. He's a mighty, mighty God. I love him. And so I just want to come to you just briefly and let you know um, last week, let me pray real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your benevolence, your love, your hope, your joy, Father, your long suffering. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our Abba, Ama, because you are the most high God and we love you, Lord. And uh, shame on people who don't believe that there's a God because I could not have made myself. Someone made my mom, someone made my dad, and so forth and so on. And Father, we just love you. We, we acknowledge you, we admire you, we, we admonish you, Father. Oh yeah, you are Abba, you are Abba. Abba Amma, hallelujah. You are Yahweh Vahe. Behold the hand, behold the nail. You're the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You are a wonderful counselor, counselor, prince of peace, the great I am. I am that I am. Hallelujah, we give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord. We thank you for this, another opportunity to come to you, Father God. So let me be broken and contrite in your sight, Lord God. And as I'm reading this word, this engrafting word that's knit, knit one pearl two to my heart, that's tied to our hearts, Father God, let it fill me once again over and over with, with your word, with your grace, with your love, Father. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here this evening, Father. And I glorify your holy name, thanking you for another opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And so last week, I just want to say last week, it was pretty awesome. I believe I went through um, Exodus uh, chapter 16 through 20. And uh, in 16, the children of Israel went through the wilderness um, of sin. They call it the wilderness of sin between Elam and Sinai on Iyer 15. Iyer, I-Y-A-R, I-Y-A-R, or Layer. No, it's Layer. L-Y-A-R. 
is the second month on the Hebrew calendar, which is our original calendar. Our, our original calendar, the second month is Lair. And so um, the first month is Nisan, Nisan, N-I-S-A-N. N-I-S-A-N is the first month, the second month is L-Y-A-R, Lair. And uh, the, on the third month, uh, which is what we're going to be going through, actually, um, we w went through that also last week. Um, in the in chapter 19 where they arrived in the Sinai Peninsula three it says three months after the night they departed from Egypt three months so on the third month who knows the month the third month amen the third month is uh, uh, S-I-V-A-N Sivan so in the month of Sivan S-I-V-A-N that's the month that they received the Holy Spirit but let me go on back for just a minute so they began to moan and complain um, as they were in this wilderness Moses went up let me keep going. Um, they got hungry. God shone his Shekinah glory in a cloud by day and, and fire by night. He promised quail at night. Uh, he promised quail at night and manna in the morning, and he gave it to them. He gave them what they asked for. We found out that an omer is two quarts. Um, chapter 16, verse 30, it said to rest on the Sabbath um, day. Uh, a time of 40 equals a time of testing. 40 equals a time of testing. You'll see 40 in the Bible a lot of times. Moses was 40 years old before he got sent him uh, out of Egypt. And then he, when he met his wife, Zipporah, he was 40. And then he stayed with ha that family for 40 years. And then when he was 80 years old, God had sent him back into Egypt to find his brother Aaron. And they got together and God told them to come together and he wanted to deliver them from Egypt. And then for 40 more years, they were in this wilderness. So 120 years went by by the time uh, Moses uh, was, was getting through the, the wilderness. Um, he was 120 years old. So that was four, three forties. So 40 is a time of testing. God is a God of dates and time. Chapter 17, 1, uh, Rephidim is a resting place. Uh, 17, 6, God told Moses to smote the rock for water, and he did, and water came forth. Moses told Joshua the young word to get other men together to fight the Amalekites, uh, and he did, and they won, um, and they defeated, and Moses, uh, as long as his, his hand stayed raised with the, with the rod, uh, they, won, they won the fight, and the Lord became our banner. He became Jehovah Nisi. Hallelujah. And uh, here, when he provided the quail, he became Jehovah Jireh, God who provides everything that we need, uh, that we need, uh, according to life and godliness. He said he would. Um, here, uh, let's see, it says, uh, tomorrow they went to the mountain, the Malachites, they were defeated, blah, blah, blah. God told Moses to remember the memorial for Joshua's defeating the Amalekites. Write it in a permanent record as a memorial. Write it down. Chapter 18, Jer uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, shows up with Zipporah and his two sons, Gershon and El Eliezer. Um, uh, Jethro uh, gave Moses instructions on how to judge, and he set the people up. He set others to help him judge. Moses did because he was doing all the judging. In chapter 19, uh, the third month of Sivan, after the children of Egypt uh, left Egypt, Verse 5, God, God says, obey my voice, keep my covenant, and then it shall be a, you shall be a peculiar treasure in yourself above all people. You shall be a peculiar people, a peculiar treasure as unto the Lord. So I want to stay peculiar, a peculiar treasure unto the Lord. I want to stay peculiar. I see so many, there's this, this pastor, I don't even want to put his name out there, but he's denying that God exists. Um, a lot of people are following him, and I, I, I sat there and watched his um, live uh, show earlier today, and 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 just incredible how uh, the, you know a sheep. The Bible says, "My sheep know my voice, and as strangers they will not follow." And so, the the fact that so many people are following this man tells me that if I go back to Second uh, Timothy two fifteen, they're not and have not studied to show themselves approved unto God. Uh, a workman. They have not been workmen um, who are rightly divided because they would know better. They would know the love of God. Um, some people were saying that we, you know we worship God. People worship God because they fear God. Well, they don't. You know the thing is, I reverence God. I I I, I 
worship God because of how much he loves me. Because I have something to compare it to. When I didn't worship God, my life was in turmoil. But when I turned my life around and decided I wanted to worship God and let him lead me and guide me in truth, and the truth of the word of God, my life turned around. And it, it really did and has gotten better. And so I trust God. And so I've learned to love God because of how much he loves me, not because I'm afraid of him. And a lot of young people today feel like, well, you're just trying to make me uh, serve God because you serve God or because I'm a, I, you're trying to make me afraid that I'm going to go to hell. No, I, I really wish that you would understand how much God truly, 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 truly above, above anything you can think of know with your own human mind loves you. He loves you. And, and it's really sad that uh, people think it's the opposite, that we're trying to force you to do something that perhaps you may not want to do. But if you, if you seek God with your whole heart and read this word, that's why I say get your own Bible. Get your Bible and read along with me. Don't watch me read. Don't watch my expressions. Look at my hair. You know, I, you know, see it's turning white. I'm going to let the white grow out now. I, you know, we're going to see how that works out. But anyways, that's not my subject right now. But the thing is, don't look at me. Look at the word of God. Study the word so that you can get, you can be that peculiar uh, uh, treasure to the Lord as he calls his people here in verse 5 of chapter 19 of Exodus. Come on now. Um, as we go on, uh, this represents a marriage contract. Uh, oh, here in verse uh, 8, uh, in 1980, it says, All the Lord has spoken, uh, we will do. Okay, as a bride tells her husband, I do. So this represents a marriage contract in 1908. And then uh, the wedding is in the King James Bible seven times, the word wedding. And then Jehovah is in the King James Bible seven times, the word Jehovah. That's why it's important to read the King James Version of the Bible. Because you will not see these sevens throughout other Bibles because they've been taken out. When I say sevens, you won't see uh, Jehovah in uh, NIV Bible seven times. You won't see it in, in uh, some of these other Bibles because it's been taken. Excuse me, it's been taken out. Um, Bride is in the King James Bible 14 times. 14 represents Jesus. God gave specific instructions for Moses to set boundaries so no one would get hurt when God showed up on Mount Sinai and he did that. Chapter 20, Moses received the law on Mount Sinai. So we say hallelujah. He gave us the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai on Sivan, Sivan 7. 7 represents God. Uh, the third month is Sivan. You've got Nisan, Leir, Sivan. Sivan 7, God gave us the Ten Commandments. The first commandment he gave quickly. Uh, he gave, uh, thou shalt have no other God before me. The second, you shall have no graven image. The third uh, is uh, keep the name of the Lord. Uh, do, not, uh, do, do not use it in vain. Hallelujah. Keep the Sabbath holy. That's number four. Number five is honor thy mother and thy father, right? Uh, that thy days on this earth may be long. And that's the one he gave us with a promise. Uh, uh, to honor thy mother and thy father so that your days will be elongated long on this earth. Number uh, six is thou shalt not kill. Uh, seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Eight, thou shalt not steal. Nine, thou shalt not lie or bear false witness against thy neighbor. And number ten, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house and uh, all the additions that go to it. And so today we are going to start... In chapter 21 and I'm probably going to read to chapter 25 from 21 to 25 today amen so get your Bibles out and if you're ready to get started because today is I'm gonna just go real quick I still have my menorah here we're waiting for the next feast day which we celebrate every year remember as a memorial as a holy convocation as a uh, as, as a uh, uh, coming together uh, of the Saints we don't do holidays, we do holy days. We do God's feast days. They're not Jewish feast days, they're God's feast days. First one, Passover. Second one, unleavened bread. Third one, first fruits. The day he died, Passover. The day he buried, unleavened bread. The day he rose from the grave, first fruits. And we're waiting for Pentecost. So today on our calendar is um, uh, April the 15th, however, Today is also Omer 15th, the 15th day of Omer. So um, 
uh, Omer are the days between the 49 days between um, from Passover to Pentecost. So actually, when Moses received the law on Sivan 7, S I V A N, Sivan 7, uh, on the Jewish calendar, it's the third month. This is the same day that the, that the Holy Ghost came upon the 120 Jews in the upper room. It's called Pentecost, and it's 50 days from Passover. So from, from Passover to Sivan 7 is 50 days, and the days in between are considered Omers. So, right, today is Omer 15, just like it's, um, it's I'm sorry, it's not Omer 15, but it's the 15th day of Omer, and today is actually Nisan 30th. So we're still in Nisan, Nisan, I said Nisan, but it's Nisan, Nisan on um, Nisan 14, Jesus died. Nisan 15, Jesus was buried. Nisan 18, he rose from the grave. And Sivan 7 is the day that Moses received the law on the Mount Sinai and 120 Jews received the Holy Spirit. On the day of that in Mount Sinai that Moses received the law and on Sivan 7, the third month on the Hebrew calendar is also the same time that 3,000 Jews died because of of worship of God already gave them the commandment not to have any other God before me or not to worship any graven image and they made a graven image in a in a bull a golden calf and God was angry so 3,000 people died on that day and we're going to actually be going through that as we read today and also in the New Testament it's the same time that 3,000 souls were saved on that day in Sivan 7 Sivan 7 it happened on the same time Sivan 7 um, in the New Testament that 3,000 souls were saved after the 120 Jews received the Holy Spirit and they, st and they started speaking in each other's tongues. And there were, they, they did understand each other's tongues. There was somebody there in their, uh, of that tongue who understood the tongue that they were speaking. It was an unknown language. It was a language that they understood, each of them. There was somebody there who understood that language. And so it's just really awesome um, how that happened. But at any rate, let's move forward. Today I'm going to be reading. Let me put this to the side. Put that to the side and then shut off this phone. Really quick, one moment. All righty. And I'm going to be starting in chapter 22. I'm sorry, chapter 21. Chapter 21 of, 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 of Exodus, King James Version. Let's go. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, he will serve. And in the seven, he shall go out free for nothing. That means he didn't owe you anything. He's free. And, um... He doesn't have to pay to redeem his freedom. It says, if he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons and daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. Wow. Wow. It says, but if the master gave him a wife while he was a slave, and they have sons and daughters, the wife and children shall still belong to the master. Wow. And he shall go out by himself free. That's not a good thing. I don't like that. But anyway, keep reading. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges, he shall also bring him to the door or unto the door post, and his master shall bore his ear enough with an awe, and he shall serve him forever. I think he's going to uh, uh, pierce his ear or something like that. Let me see. Then his master shall bring him before the judges and shall publicly bore his ear Yeah, with an owl. And after that, he will be a slave forever. Wow. And if a man shall sell his daughter to be a man, maid servant, she shall not go out as the maid servants do. If she please her him, if she please not her master, 
who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed, to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he have dealt deceitfully with her. I'm going to read that in the living. If a man sells his daughter as a slave, she shall not be freed at the end of six years as the men, as the men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, then he shall let her be bought back again. But he has no power to sell her to foreigners since he was wrong since he has wronged her by no longer wanting her after marrying her hmm. verse 9 and if he have betrothed her unto a son he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters and if he and if if he take him another wife her food her raiment and her duty of marriage shall not shall he not diminish. And if he do not these three unto her, then she shall she go out free without money. He that smitteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. I want to read go back and read that again about the, the slave, the wife. If she does not please the man who bought her, then he shall let her be bought back again. But he has no power to sell her to foreigners, since he was wrong, since he has wronged her by no longer wanting her after marrying her. And if he arranges an engagement between a Hebrew slave girl and his son, then he may no longer treat her as a slave girl, but must treat her as a daughter. If he himself marries her, ooh, and then takes another wife, he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as his wife. Wow. If he fails in any of these three things, then she may leave freely without any payment. He that smitteth a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into the hand, his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die. And he that smitteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death. And he that steals a man and sells him, or if be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. And he that curses his father and his mother shall surely be put to death. Can you, do you see what I'm reading here? These are laws that God gave to um, Moses. And Moses, this is, this, is, this is a time where Moses um, was judging the people. And these are the laws for slaves. But this also applied to the children. It says, but if, if his, it says, um, if he that curses his father or his mother curses them. These kids today get away with murder then, right? It says, he that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone or with his fist, and he die not but keeps his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be, be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of time of his time, and shall cause him to thoroughly uh, to be thoroughly healed. I'm gonna read that in the living. It says, it says if it says 18. If two men are fighting, and one hits the other with a stone or with his fist, and injures him so that he must be confined to bed but doesn't die. If later he is able to walk again, even with a limp, the man who hit him will be innocent, except that he must pay for the loss of his time until he thoroughly, he's thoroughly healed and pay any medical expenses. That's how it should be today. Don't put him in jail. Make him pay for, put him to work and make him pay for hurting someone else. 20. And if a man smite his servant 
or his maid with a rod, and he die under his hand, he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, if he continue a day or two, shall not he shall not be punished, for he for he is his money. If a man strive and hurt a woman with child, so that her fruit depart from her, so she has a miscarriage, and yet no mischief follow, he shall be surely punished, according as the woman's husband will lay upon him, and he shall pay as the judges determine. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, an eye for an eye, two for two. Y'all have heard that before. How many times? Thank God times have changed to some degree. An eye for an eye, two for a tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Wow. And if a man smite the eye of his servant, or the eye of his maid, that it perish, he shall let him go free for his eye's sake. And if he smite out his, his maidservant's tooth, or his maidservant's tooth, his manservant or his maidservant's tooth, he shall let him go free for his tooth's sake. <laughs> That's good. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die, then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten. Wow. But the owner of the ox shall be quit. Let's see. But the owner of the ox shall be held responsible. But if the ox were, op were want to push with his horn, in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him, but that he kills a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid up upon him. Whether he hath gored a son, or have gored a daughter, according to this judgment, shall it be done unto him. Let me read that in the living. It says, the same law holds if the ox gores a boy or girl. Okay. But if the ox gores, gores a slave, whether male or female, the slave's master shall be given 30 pieces of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. What? If the ox shall push the main servant, a maid servant, he shall give unto the master 30 pieces of silver. I guess whoever owns it. Oh, because you killed his servant, his, his, his slaves. Can you believe that there's a chapter on slaves? This is ridiculous. No wonder Jesus had to come and free us. Hmm. If a man shall open a pit or a man shall dig a pit, and not cover it, and an ox or an ass falls in, into it, the owner of the pit shall make it good and give money unto the owner of them, and the dead beast shall be his. If a man's ox hurt another's that he die, then they shall sell the live ox and divide the money of it, and the dead ox also they shall divide. Or if it be known that the ox hath used to push in time past, that was used to push, or to, that was a worker, as his owner hath not kept him in, he shall surely pay, pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. Chapter 22. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox. For a sheep, for a sheep. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. For he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Hmm. If the thief be certainly found in his 
hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. Let me read that in the living. If he is caught in the act of stealing a live ox or donkey or sheep or whatever it is, he shall pay double value as his fine. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put it in his beast, he shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field and of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. If fire break out and catch in thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed wherewith, he that kindleth the fire shall surely make restitution. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of a man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. <laughs> Don't steal something to put in your friend's house, duh. Because if it's found, you'll pay double for what you stole. If a thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he have put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. Huh, okay. For all manners of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, for raiment, or for any man manner of lost thing, which another challenges, challengeth to his to be his, and cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. And if a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, an ox, a sheep, and any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt, or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall the oath of the Lord be between them both. That he hath not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and it shall not make it good. And if the stole if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. Uh, and if a man borrow aught of his neighbor and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof bring not with it, he shall surely make it good. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hired thing, it came for his hire. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, Hmm. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Wow. If a man seduces a girl who is not engaged to anyone and sleeps with her, he must pay the usual dowry. So now she must become your wife. Should be like that today. And accept her as his wife. 17. If a father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Because back in the day, there was a dowry that came along with the girl when she married the guy, or there's the other way around. Anyways, um, right, if there's a virgin, uh, there's money. The, the, I think the dowry came to the, the father and then they make it, made an exchange. Wow. And one got the money and the other got the wife, because she's a virgin. It says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. So they're talking about witches and warlocks. Ha. Ah, sorcery. A sorceress shall be put to death. So we know that there was sorcerers and people practicing witchcraft even back in Exodus. Well, this is almost 6,000 years ago. Wow. Whoso liveth with a beast shall surely be put to death. You know what that means? Liveth with a beast? That means they have sexual intercourse with an animal. It's wrong. In the living, it says, anyone having sexual relations with an animal shall certainly be executed. And I know some countries, Switzerland, or some of these countries in our world today have allowed uh, bestiality to be legal, which means you can have sex with your, your animal. That's horrible. 
20. He that sacrifice unto any God except the Lord, the Most High God, only he shall be utterly destroyed. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If thou afflict them in any way or any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an user, usurer. Sorry. Of, as a usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that by the sun, by sundown. For he that is covering only, it is his raiment for his skin. Where wherein shall he sleep? And it shall come to pass when he cries unto me, I will hear him, for I am gracious. I'm going to read that in the living. Um, if you lend money to a needy fellow Hebrew, you are not to handle the transaction in an ordinary way with interest. So you don't add interest to your brother's money that you, that you loan money to. If you take his clothing as a pledge... Of his repayment, you must let him have it back at night, for it is probably his only warmth. How can he sleep without it? If you don't return it, and he cries to me for help, I will hear and be very gracious to him at your expense, for I am very compassionate. 28. Thou shalt not revile God, small g nor curse the ruler of thy people. You shall not blaspheme, blaspheme God, no, this is the big G God, nor curse government officials, your judges, or your rulers. This is why when I talk about our president, I always reverence him in a, a President Donald Trump because this is his office that was given unto him. If God didn't want him to be in office, he wouldn't be in office. God had to move the witches out of the office. There could not have been a Hillary Clinton to follow Obama, who was not Christian in the first place, who was not one who reverenced God or was an ally or a friend of Israel. God had to move that mountain. So some people don't understand, well, why is President Trump? He's just got a dirty mouth. He's, he don't think he's... Can't, what, who is he? Well, he's a man that God is using to ch to change time and to bring about prophecy um just like russia uh, uh, sending that missile this is all prophecy so god had to use a man who was going to have a heart for israel and he's taking the american embassy into israel is it american no the, he's taking the uh yeah i think he's taking the embassy in from uh, oh god i can't think of, don't quote me on that one i can't think right now what i'm trying to say but um, he, uh, President Trump is for Israel and Jerusalem, where, Donald, where, where President Obama was not. I'll just leave it like that. So we have to be careful um, to give our judges, our rulers, the proper respect. Okay, don't blaspheme God or curse government officials. So don't, don't you know, God's last name is not damn. God's last name is not damn. He's a most high God. You reverence him whether you believe in him or not. Just if you don't want to trust, then maybe you figure it out later on <coughs> that God is real. And he created this earth. Man didn't create it. Man dies. <coughs> God is forever. And he has always been. And so let's not be ignorant. Amen. Uh, verse 29, it says, Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors, and the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. I'm going to read it in the living. You must be prompt in giving me the tithe of your crops and of your wine and the redemption payment of your oldest son. 
as uh, to the firstborn of an oxen and, and a sheep, give it to me on the eighth day, after leaving it with his mother for seven days. And since you yourselves are holy, my special people do not eat any animal that has been attacked or killed by a wild animal. Leave its carcass for dogs to eat. So do it properly. If you're going to kill an animal, do it yourself. If the animal kills another animal, don't eat it. Um, yeah. And some of this stuff still applies today. A lot of it still applies today, especially the respect and love. Um, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat anymore. Um, sometimes I think about these are things I hear now. I used to hear then before I became a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian about two, almost two and a half years now. And I remember, um, you know, they say that when an animal is killed, whatever hormones are ex are released at that moment, that, you know, the spirit of, the, not the spirit of fear, but that the hormones that exude fear, uh, the flight and flight hormones, the, the adrenaline, those hormones are in the flesh of that animal the moment that they're killed. And so we eat those hormones. We end up eating that. And sometimes it's just a little bit too much. But I, I, I figure food is food. It tastes good. I don't have to eat meat. And I feel better. I'm lighter. Um, yeah. At any rate, let's move on. So chapter 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report, but put thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Do not pass along untrue reports. Do not incorporate with an evil man by affirming on the witness stand something you know is false. So don't agree with something that's a lie. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a curse to decline after many to rest judgment, neither shalt thou, thou countenance a poor man of his cause. Do, it says don't join mobs intent on evil when on the witness stand don't be swayed in your testimony by the mood of the majority present and do not slant your testimony in favor of a man just because he is poor just do what's right if you come upon an enemy's ox or donkey that he straight has strayed away and must take it back to its owner if you see the enemy trying to get his donkey onto his feet beneath a heavy load, you must not go on by, but help him, must help him. A man's poverty is no excuse for twisting justice against him. Yeah, just because a man is poor doesn't mean you want to side with the one who's rich, even though the one who's rich is wrong. Just do right. Okay? Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and the righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. It says, And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverts the words of the righteous. Also thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. And six years thou shalt sow thy land, and shalt gather the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest, and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat. Wow. And what they leave, the beasts of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard, and with the olive yard. So this is significant because this is something that's going on today. If you if you read the Harbingers with Jonathan Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, it's called the Harbingers, and the other one is called the Shemitah. Um, he talks about how our our world today doesn't follow this word of God, and this is why a lot of our finances are in turmoil, our real estate is in turmoil is because we don't follow the principles of the word of God. And if we did, we would understand that it says, um, in the living it says, sow and reap your crops for six years, but let the land rest and lie fallow during the seventh year and let the poor among the people harvest any volunteer crop that may come up 
leave the rest for the animals to enjoy. The same rules apply to your vineyards and your olive groves. See, we get greedy and we want year round, year after year, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21. We want to keep going year after year, reaping and sowing, reaping and sowing. But the land, even our land today, because of the lack of rest to, to our land, there's not a whole lot of nutrients in the soil anymore. Because we don't let the land rest. Maybe we can't afford to. Maybe we could afford to do it if we... Uh, um, um, took turns, you know, uh, different parts of the country. I don't know, maybe it's not possible to do that, but God knows. Verse 12, six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. And, and see, God is just trying to set up principles so that our bodies can regenerate. And, you know, there's, there's a blessing in this. Um, it says, on the seventh day thou shalt rest, that thine ox and thine ass may rest, and the son of thine handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. So everybody will rest on the seventh day. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me, three times in a year. <laughs> and we're gonna we already talking about here we go here we go see he's telling us three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in in the year thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread hmm. thou shalt thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in thine appointed time Appointed of the month of Abib, Abib, which is also Nisan. Abib is also Nisan. Um, for in that, for in it thou canst came out of Egypt, and thou shalt appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest or first fruits. Um, the unleavened bread is the day that Jesus was buried. First fruits was the day that he. Oh, let me get my. So he's already talking about it. Moses is already talking about it. So he's talking about the feast. So Passover wasn't isn't is it mentioned here? But the feast of unleavened bread is mentioned, and the feast of first fruits is mentioned. It says, "In the feast of uh, of the harvest of the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of the gatherings, which is in the end of the year." So that's the tabernacles when they all came together. So I guess they did tabernacle. They did celebrate at the end of the year the tabernacles. Um, they did also actually they they uh, celebrated atonement too because um, once a year they went to the temple. See, but they haven't gotten to that yet. It's coming. Because Moses is going to do the temple and all of the specifications and everything. And so the Day of Atonement. This is the Day of Atonement. This is Yom Kippur. This is considered the Day of Atonement. This is called Tabernacles. Or uh, Sukkot. Awesome. I'm just so excited about this. It says, three times in the year all the males shall appear before the Lord God, and thou shalt offer blood from, of my sacrifice with leavened bread. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning. The first of the first fruits of the land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see a kid in its mother's milk. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. But beware, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. I'm going to read that in the living. Uh, As you reap each of your crops, bring me the choicest sample of the first day's harvest. It shall be offered to the Lord your God. Do not boil a young kid, a young goat in his mother's milk. Do not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. See, I am sending an angel before you to lead 
you safely to the land I have prepared for you. Who reverence him and obey all his instructions. I am sending an angel. So verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Lord, send an angel before me right now, Lord, to keep me in my way. Send an angel in, in, in those who are listening to this broadcast, Lord, and keep them in their way, Lord. This is an angel and, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared, Lord. Lord, I pray, that's my prayer. Send the angel, Lord, before us, Father, to keep us in the, our way and to bring us into the place which you have prepared for us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for bringing the angel to keep us in our way, to bring us to the place that you have prepared. Thank you, Jesus. I love it. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Your transgressions. For my name is in him. I'm going to read that in the living. It says, reverence him and obey all his instructions. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgressions. He is my representative. He bears my name. Okay? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For my angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Hallelujah! Jesus! Woo! We, we serve a powerful God. Either you believe it or you don't. I just happen to believe it. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Don't give in to the, to the hype at work. Don't give in to the hype of the, of the crowd. Stay away from the crowd because God will send his angels, right, to fight for you. Hallelujah. He will destroy your enemies. And he will bring closer to those who want to be close to him, to you. Don't be pressured into being part of the crowd. Stay away. He's already sent his angel. If he sent it to them then, of course he is sent in, sending them now, today. Know that God has sent his angels. He said he'll send his angels to us to keep charge over us, to keep us in all of our way, to keep us from dashing our foot against the stone in, in, uh, in uh, 91 uh, Psalms. Come on now. Either you believe this word or you don't. I just happen to believe it because I got something to compare it to. What do I have to compare it to? The jacked up life I lived for many years. Not that it was all jacked up, but a lot of mistakes I made. I made. But when I chose to serve God, when I choose to believe that the angels have charge over me, then my, every, my everyday life is totally different. And I don't go with the crowd. I don't have to. <laughs> neither do you just stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that we can be able to withstand all these fiery darts in the end time come on people we can do this this word of God is strong and powerful sharper than any two edged sword cutting and dividing asunder the bone from the marrow disposing the heart showing us who we are giving us instructions just stay plugged in. I get tired sometimes. I'm going to be honest with you. I get tired. But something always pushes me. Something always. Come on, Crystal. Wake up. Go do this. Go do that. Go to work. Go do that. Whatever it is, something's always prompting me to do the right thing. Let's keep going. So he said he'll give angels charge to, to defeat the Amorite, the Hittite, the Parasite, the Canaanite, the Hevite, the Jebusite. Cut them all off. <laughs> because he is Jehovah Shaviot, the God of hosts, the most high God of hosts. He has a host of angels on standby. All we got to do is ask him. <laughs> he said, we have not because we ask not. When we ask, we ask amiss. 
We asking for the wrong thing. He got our, he has our back in every situation. Hallelujah. He will overthrow them. 25, and ye shall serve the Lord, capital L, O-R-D, your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He became their Jehovah Rapha. Now he's a God who heals them. Hallelujah. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. In the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and I will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs upon thee. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee. I will, drive, I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. By little and little I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Thank you, Lord. I will set thy bounds before the Red Sea un even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Just don't make a covenant with their gods. Don't serve their gods. Don't listen to uh, what people have to say about what they're doing. So that you can come along with them and come on and go have a good time with No. Not if it's going to take your mindset out of serving the Most High God. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just stay plugged in because God's got a plan for you. He, he said, if you stay plugged in, you become my peculiar people. You become my peculiar treasure is a term that he used. You become my peculiar treasure. And just like he just told them, I'm not going to drive them out in one year right away. But little by little, by li it says, by little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Why? Because he can only give us a little bit at a time. And it is a test. How are you going to deal with a little bit? Okay, I'll give you a little bit more. i take away a little bit more of, of the pain. Okay, let's see how you're going to deal with it. Okay, I'll take away a little bit more of the pain. Let me see how you're going to do it. Okay, I'll take away a little bit more of the pain. Little by little is what he says. Verse 30, it says it right here. 29, I will not, I'm reading in living, he says, I will not do it all in one year, for the land would become a wilderness, and the wild animals will become too many to control. But I will drive them out a little at a time until your population has increased enough to fill the land. So he couldn't get them, he couldn't tear them away too quickly because the land would be desolate and the animals would take over. So I'm going to do it a little bit because as I destroy, I'm going to be building. As I destroy, I'm going to help you build your houses up. As I destroy, I'm going to help a few other men get wives and more and more children are going to be born. Now I get to fill the land up with people instead of killing all of these people who are your enemies and making the land desolate and the animals come take over. Now they're trying to kill the people. No, I'm going to do a little at a time. I'm going to test you a little at a time. If you're faithful in a little, I'll make you ruler over much. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea. I'm going to read it in the living. And I will set your enlarged boundaries from the Red Sea to the Philistine coast. And from the southern desert, as far as Euphrates River, I will cause you to defeat the people now living in the land and will drive them out ahead of you. You must make no covenant with them, nor have anything to do with their gods, small g gods, money, time, parties, football games, basketball games, taking your time away from studying this word. Praying, taking your time from praying or being with others in the Lord. 
Bible study. You know what I'm saying. Little at a time. Because I don't want you to start serving other gods. Can't do it too quickly. Don't let them live among you. For I know that they will infect you with their sin of worshiping false gods. And that would be an utter disaster to you. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their small g gods, I will surely be a snare unto you. Oh God. God forbid. 21, 22, 23, 24. So that's four chapters. I'm already an hour into this thing. I'm going to read. <sighs> okay, I'm going to read one more. I'm going to read one more. 24. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord. Who is he? That angel? <laughs> he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord. Thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and worship ye afar. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord. Only Moses can come near the Lord. All the rest of you come on up, but only Moses can go near the Lord. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said, we will do. I will do. I will go into covenant with you, Lord. Yes, I do. Yes, it's a marriage ceremony here. Yes, we will. We will do it. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning. So he wrote. So Moses is writing the story as he's going because Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's the Pentateuch. It's the five first chapters of the of the uh, Old Testament. He wrote it. Moses wrote it. So it says, And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord, and rose up early in the morning, and built an altar unto the, under the hill, and the twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Oh, praise God. I love it. I love it. I love it when I read that they built an altar and how they did it. It says, Roses rolled down, rolled down the laws, and early the next morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 pillars around the altar because there are 12 tribes of Israel. Wow. Sorry, I'm just writing. Um, uh, it says, And he sent young men and uh, of the children of Israel and offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings and oxen unto the Lord. So he built an offering, he built an altar, and then he brought offerings. And so he consistently did this, as well as Abraham did it, Isaac did it, Jacob did it, Joseph did it. Okay? They continuously did this. And later on, God is going to have Moses build the sanctuary, and he's going to be able to do these sacrifices in the, te in the temple, in the tabernacle. Um, and Moses took half of the blood and put it on the basins and uh, half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people and they said all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient wow remember what they're saying they said I do later earlier in chapter 20 they're saying it again in 24 twice and Moses took Oh, am I done already? Oh, I'm going to 24. Oh. Sorry, I thought there was more. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Oh, okay. All right. Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning these words. Then went Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were a body of heaven in its clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God and did eat and drink. 
said that they saw God, but the Bible says no one can see God and live. I have to read that. Let me read that in the living. Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up into the mountain, and they saw the God of Israel under his feet. There seemed to be a pavement of brilliant sapphire stones of clear as the heavens. Yet, even though the elders saw God, he did not destroy them. And they had a meal together before the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me into the mountain and remain until I give thee the laws of the commandments I have written on tablets of stone, so that you can teach the people from them. So Moses and Joshua and his assistant went up into the mountain of God. And he told the elders, Stay here and wait for... He told the elders, I'm reading in the living because... Uh, I'm going to go back to the King James Version. And he said to the elders, Tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. Unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and, cl and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode on the mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up in the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So this is, the, this is one of the reasons why Habakkuk came onto the children of Israel. Because they were discouraged that Moses was gone for so long. So he was gone for 40 days and 40 nights. But the glory of the Lord was shining up. Oh, this is, let me just read in 11, 15, 24, 15. Then Moses went up, Moses went up the mountain and disappeared into the cloud at, at the top. And the glory, hi, la, 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 shala, the glory, the Shekinah glory of the Lord rested upon Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days. In the seventh day, he called to Moses from the cloud. Those at the bottom of the mountain saw the awesome sight. The glory of the Lord was on the mountain top, looked like a raging fire. Woo! Y'all seen raging fires on the news, right? Some people have been in raging fires. What a, what a place to be. Wow. Moses disappeared into the cloud covered mountain top and was there for 40 days and 40 nights. So remember I talked about 40 being a time of testing. So God dealt with Moses for six days um, on the mountain. They were probably praying and worshiping God and, and fellowshipping together. And then on the seventh day, God called Moses into the cloud. And God kept Moses in that cloud for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm going to read 25 because I can't stand it. I cannot just not read it. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. And every man that gives it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offerings. And this is the offering which ye shall take them, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair, and ram skin dyed red and badger skin and smitten wood, oil for the light, hallelujah, that's olive oil, the best olive oil that they make, for the light spices for anointing oil, uh, spices for anointing oil, and sweet incense, hallelujah, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the ephod, you know, for the breastplate of the 12 tribes, y'all have seen the ephod, if you haven't, look it up, E-P-H-O-D, it's a breastplate that goes on the priest uh, of the children of Israel, um, when they're uh, when they put on their their garb to go into the temple the holy of holies when they dress up hallelujah um, The breastplate and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them uh, According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle Remember I talked about God is going to have Moses build a tabernacle in the pattern of all the instruments thereof uh, even so shall ye make it and this uh, menorah was um, in the tabernacle the, the seven candlestick menorah was in the tabernacle not the nine candlestick the seven hallelujah uh, verse 10 and they shall make it make an ark of smitten wood two cubits and a half shall be length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof God has given him specific uh, measurements for every 
uh, piece of instrument that goes into the tabernacle. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, wherein and without, on the inside and outside, shalt thou overlay it, and shalt make upon it a crown of gold around about. I wish I had a picture to show it to you right now. Um, and thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings, and it shall be on one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves and of smitten wood, um, and overlay them with gold, and thou shalt put the staves into the rings, and and uh, by the, its side of the ark, and the ark may be born with them. And the staves shall be in the rings of the ark, and they shall not be taken from it. And thou shalt put into the ark the testimony uh, which I shall give thee. So what's going to go in the ark? One thing is going to be the testimony. Uh, one is going to be uh, Aaron's rod, and the Ten Commandments will be okay uh and well let me not tell you the story before we read thou shalt make a mercy seat hallelujah of pure gold the mercy seat is where jesus blood dripped down when they had the earthquake his blood dripped down into the mercy seat the day he died hallelujah just like prophecy told us it would and make one chair up on one side on each side there's a chair up on either side of this uh uh um uh oh my gosh what's he making he's making the ark of the covenant hallelujah um, uh, mercy shall pure two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and, two, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold and beaten uh, work shalt thou make them in two ends of the mercy seat hallelujah uh, on the mercy seat and make one cherubim on one side and the other cherubim on the other side of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat, hallelujah, with their wings, covering the mercy seat with their wings. And their faces shall look at one another towards the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and the ark uh, thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, hallelujah, and there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Hallelujah, that when God opens the tabernacle and you go in within the holies of holies is where this Ark of the Covenant and the mercy seat is, hallelujah, and that's where the priest will commune with God, the high priest. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Um Hallelujah. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and the ark shalt thou put the testimony that I shall give thee. And there shall I will meet thee, and there I will meet thee, and I will commune with thee. For above the mercy seat, and from between the two cherubim which are above the ark of the testimony, and all the things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Thou shalt also make a table of smitten wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make thereof a crown of gold around about. And thou shalt make unto it a border, and a head breadth around about. And thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And thou shalt make it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four seat thereof over against the border shall be the rings shall the rings be for places of staves to bear the table so the rings will be on either end and the stave will go through the ring to hold up the ark of the covenant hallelujah oh god thank you jesus and thou shalt make the staves of smitten wood and overlay them with pure gold with gold that the table may be born with them and thou shalt make the dishes thereof and spoons thereof and covers thereof and bowls thereof and covers withal and of pure gold thou shalt make them and thou shalt set upon the table showbread the table showbread before me always, and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold of beaten work. Shall thy candlestick be made, uh, her shaft and her branches, hallelujah, and the bowls, either the bowls that he's talking about, the bowls and the bowls, hallelujah, and the knobs. Uh, uh, of his flower shall be the same hallelujah and six branches shall be on the outside here we go we got one two three four five six six branches shall be on the outside hallelujah um oh jesus hallelujah 
Mm, where am I? Still blah, 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 blah. Six branches shall be on the sides of it, and three branches of candlestick on the other side, and the three branches of the candlestick on the other side. Three bowls made to look like almonds with the knob, hallelujah, and a flower in the branch, and three bowls made to look like almonds, hallelujah, hallelujah. These are the, th the bowls here. You got your bowls here. To made to look like almonds, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. And with the knobs of their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches. Hallelujah. Of the same. And the knob under the two branches. The same. And the knob under the two branches. The same. According to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. <coughs> their knobs and their branches shall be of the same. And it shall be of one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seventh lamp thereof. This is the one in the middle, hallelujah. This is representing the Holy Ghost, day of Pentecost, day that Moses got the law, seven, seven, hallelujah, the third month of the Hebrew calendar, hallelujah, and the knobs, their branches shall be of the same, and it shall be beaten work of gold, and thou shalt make the seventh lamp thereof, which is the middle one, and they shall light the lamps thereof, and they, that they be, uh, give light over against it, and the, and the tongs thereof, and this, uh, 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 the snuff dishes thereof, the one, the thing who to, puts out the light. Uh, it wasn't a candle before. Actually, it was the, 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 it was, these bowls were filled with uh, uh, all pure olive oil. Okay, and then there was a spigot like this in it, right? Like that. But it wasn't a candle. Hallelujah. But this, these little bowls uh, 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 held the uh, olive oil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And thou shalt make a seven lamps thereof, and thou shalt light the lamps thereof, and they shall give light over against us. And the tongs thereof, and the sniff dishes thereof, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall you make it in all the vessels, and look that, that thou make them after their pattern, uh, which was showed thee in the mount. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Uh, and the living says, then make these seven lamps of the lampstand and set them so that they reflect their light forward. And the snuffers and trays are to be made of pure gold. You will need about 107 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that everything you make follows the pattern I sh am showing you here on the mountain. Oh God. Let me turn it this way. It should be this way. This is not pure gold, but it is gold. It's beautiful, huh? But God gave me specific specifications. Do you think that we should not be following these specifications today? The answer is yes, we should. That was the end of chapter 25. So that's five chapters that we read today. I'm so excited because God is planning the tabernacle. God is giving specific instructions for the tabernacle. We are the tabernacle today because Jesus rent the, um, the veil of the temple and the earthquake separated. Hallelujah. Sin from, from, from death and life. Hallelujah. Because of the death of the cross. Because of Passover, hallelujah. Jesus died for our sins on Passover, hallelujah. On Nisan 14, he died for us. The same day that the children of Israel um, were saved from Egypt after painting the post of an unspotted lamb of the first year, which represent the Lord Jesus Christ on the doorpost, hallelujah. God passed over with the death angel. He passed over the children of Israel and saved those who had the blood painted. And Passover today represents the day Jesus died on the cross in the sign 14. He fulfilled Passover. Jesus fulfilled unleavened bread. And for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On this sign 15 he was buried. For seven days after this day we eat unleavened bread. And on the third day after Passover... He rose and is called first fruits. Nisan 18. 
and 50 days later, the third month, Sivan, Sivan 7, the Pentecost, day of Pentecost, was the day that Moses received the law on Mount Sinai. The same day that the children of it, the same day that the disciples received the Holy Spirit, 120 of them, of Jews who were in the upper room. God gave us these feast days and he's setting up the temple. He's setting up the tabernacle with specific instructions. He has not done away with this. So to God be the glory. Lord, we thank you, Father. I pray for anybody. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't follow the crowd. Be a peculiar um, people to the Lord. Uh, he called us something else. But it's okay. We're peculiar to the Lord, to the Most High. Be the one who's set apart. Be the one who's sanctified. Be the one who doesn't worship other gods, small g gods. Be the one who sets a precedent and makes a difference. Don't follow the crowd. Be as the Holy One of Israel is, was, and is to come. Come on now. Don't follow the crowd. Even God told Moses and the children of Israel, I will, I will get rid of your enemies. I'm not going to do it all at one time, but little by little, I'm going to change your life. I'm going to give you a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I'm a living witness that God keeps his promises. And there are thousands and thousands of millions of people who have trusted God and God has kept his promises. Just don't serve other gods. Always have a repentive heart. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe this word. I just happen to believe it, God. I need you in my life. Please forgive me of my sins. Please cleanse me from anything that's not like you. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that he was buried and he rose again and he left us the Holy Spirit. I believe it, Lord. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. The angels are rejoicing because you, another person, have given your life to Christ. Now let him rule your life. Get yourself a King James Bible and come with me on Sundays. Look at my blog. Go to YouTube. Get yourself a Gmail account. You have to have a Gmail account. Mine is uh, cryfortia at gmail.com. That's my email address on Gmail. C-R-Y, the number four, letter T, letter A on, on uh, Gmail. I have a Yahoo account with the same uh, first letters. But Gmail, get yourself a Gmail account so that you can go into YouTube. And you can like and subscribe. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. That means you liked what you saw. And then subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. And then hit the bell so that you can get every one of my, um, every time I leave a message, you'll get it. Every notification you will receive. So to God be all the glory, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your benevolence. We thank you for this engrafted word. I thank you for the, 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 the hearts of your people, Lord, those who receive. And I pray for those who won't receive or those who have turned their backs on you, Father. I pray you forgive them of their sins and cleanse them from all unrighteousness, Father. Remove anything that's not like you. We bless your holy name, Father. I thank you once again for another chance in Jesus' name to be on this, on this vlog. Father, we love you and we trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Give your life to Christ. Live your life the way God tells us to live it. Just stay pure as much as you can. He says to be righteous because I'm righteous and to be holy because I'm holy. Give it to the Lord. He loves you with all his heart. Love him back, right? When we learn how to love God, oh my gosh, it's life-changing. Trust me. It's, it's life changing and he will give you the desires of your heart give him glory, amen I always have issues to God be the glory God bless you all